Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to walk you through the three major types of cell gradients. Cell gradients are found across the animal kingdom, within bacteria, within plants, really within multitude of living organisms out there. And the importance of these gradients can be seen when you look at the physiology of a specific organism. These gradients will be the foundation for how the kidneys are able to filter out waste products while reabsorbing all the significant things that you need to hold on to. It's going to be the basis for how neurons can send electrical signals to and from tissues for communication. It's the foundation for how skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, smooth muscle contracts, how hormones will impact um, and drive their functions on tissues. So these gradients will be the focus of virtually every kind of body system that you're going to go through within anatomy and physiology. So what we'll do is we'll start with some of the basics within each type of cell gradient. And we'll start with chemical. And we're going to start with chemical really because that's the one that most people will already be familiar with. Chemical versus concentration gradient, for the most part, they're going to be the same thing. So I might use those terms interchangeably throughout this video. And chemical gradients, if you relate back to what concentration gradients are, things will move from a high concentration to a low concentration. So in other words, from where there's a lot of a specific molecule to where there's very little of that specific molecule. And that's chemical or the concentration gradient. You have an electrical gradient. An electrical gradient will have things that are positive moving to where there are fewer positives or more negative, and negatively charged molecules will move the opposite direction, where there are fewer negative molecules or more positive. So for the electrical gradient, it's not really concentration. It is going to be the differences in charge from one side to another. Opposites will be attracted to each other. So that's the electrical gradient. Now, when you look across the board at molecules, things that are not charged such as glucose, you're really not going to focus on the electrical gradient. You're going to be focusing on the chemical gradient. But for things that are charged, like ions, sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, calcium, things like that, you have to take into account the chemical and the electrical gradients together. And when you do that and you look at the cumulative effect of both those gradients and which direction these ions will flow, it is going to be summarized as the electrochemical gradient. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through these three molecules, glucose, sodium, and potassium, look at their chemical and electrical gradients, figure out what their electrochemical gradient is, and then talk about briefly in which direction will these molecules go through the cell. So we'll start with glucose. For glucose, for chemical gradient, for simplicity's sake here, we're just going to count how many glucose molecules do we have on the outside of the cell, or extracellular, versus inside the cell, intracellular. And you will see that on the outside, there are a total of five glucose molecules, compared to two glucose molecules on the inside, and therefore the chemical gradient would be driving glucose molecules inside that cell, going from high to low concentration, five to two. Now, for the electrical gradient, for glucose, you're pretty much going to ignore that because glucose isn't significantly charged. So here, for glucose, nice and easy, the chemical gradient will match the electrochemical gradient and glucose will be pushed, so to speak, inside that cell. Now, it gets a little more complicated when, when you look at charged molecules, such as ions. And here I'm showing sodium potassium because these are two of the most important ions within the body. Um, you can also think about this for calcium, for chloride, bicarbonate, um, all sorts of different other positively charged molecules. So for sodium, let's do the chemical gradient. For the chemical gradient, we have 15 sodium molecules or ions outside the cell versus four inside. So that would drive sodium inwards towards the intracellular side of the cell, going from high to low concentration. 
Now let's quickly switch to potassium here for chemical gradient. And you'll see that it's the different kind of chemical gradient. For potassium, right, you've got a total of five potassiums on the outside. You have a total of 13 potassiums on the inside. So potassium has a chemical gradient that is going to push potassium outside towards the extracellular part of the cell, the opposite direction of sodium. Now this pattern of chemical gradient is going to be the same throughout the body within all cells. And the main reason for the creation of this gradient will be through sodium potassium ATPase pumps, which will be discussed in a separate video on active versus passive transport types. So here we have sodium and potassium, opposite chemical gradients. What about electrical gradients? So for electrical gradients, remember that you are not looking at a specific concentration. You are looking at positively charged molecules and how they want to go where there are fewer positively charged molecules or negative. And negative wants to go where there's more positives, less negative. Okay. Now here, because sodium and potassium are both positively charged ions, they both will want to go where there are fewer positively charged ions. So to figure this out, because they are both positively charged, you add the number together because they both would want to go to the same area. So all together, when you add sodium and potassium um, up, you will see that there are a total of 20 positively charged oops, 20 positively charged ions on the outside. Let's do that for sodium and potassium. And then on the inside, when you add those up, you will see that there are a total of 17 positively charged molecules. And again, to calculate this, you're really just adding the total number of positively charged molecules here. 4 plus 13 equals 17. On the inside, on the outside, it's 15 plus 5 equals 20. So where would positively charged ions like sodium and potassium want to go based on this? It's going to these ions are going to want to go where there are fewer positively charged ions, a.k.a. more negative. So here you will see that sodium and potassium would both be driven inwards if electrical gradient alone was the focus. But that's not the focus here. The focus is going to be the cumulative effect of chemical plus electrical gradient. And to get this, you need to add these two together. So what we'll do here, we will add the chemical plus the electrical gradients to get the electrochemical gradient overall, which will govern where are these ions going to go. So for sodium, you look at the chemical gradient, it is a strong gradient driving sodium in. For sodium, the electrical gradient, it is a gradient driving sodium in. It's weak, but it's still driving sodium in. So that's pretty straightforward and easy. Therefore, sodium is going to want to go in. Now, for potassium, it's going to be a little bit different. Now, for potassium, you will see that just like sodium, the electrical gradient is relatively weak, but it is driving potassium inwards, where there are fewer positive ions. But you look at the chemical gradient, and it is significantly stronger than the electrical gradient. 13 to 5 versus 20 to 17. So based on this, when you combine what is the cumulative effect, you go with whatever gradient is stronger, and that will overpower the weaker gradient. So here, you would see potassium flowing out of the cell because chemical gradient is stronger than electrical gradient. An analogy here could be two people holding hands and they both want to go in different directions. That's like chemical versus electrical gradient. Now, what person's going to win out and pull the other person in that direction is whoever's going to be stronger. In this case, whatever the gradient is stronger will win out. Okay, so there we have it. So there we have the chemical and electrical gradients for glucose, for sodium, and for potassium. 
how you calculate an estimate of chemical gradient strength, electrical gradient strength, and electrochemical gradient strength, which will ultimately determine which direction will these ions and non-ions like glucose travel. So in the next video on primary and active, primary active transport, secondary active transport, and passive transport types, we will go through these gradients in a little bit more detail, talk about how these gradients are built. Um, so I will be seeing you on the next video.